My research focuses on sustainable management of vegetable diseases. I primarily work with fungal diseases, but also some diseases of water molds, um, bacteria, even viruses and nematodes if they come along. My first two projects were one project where I uh, work with, worked with uh, different tropical cucurbits and trying to find uh, species of cucurbits that had not been tested before that are resistant to a disease called gummy stem blight. Gummy stem blight and anthracnose are fungal diseases on watermelon. Those are primarily managed by crop rotation and also fungicides. I looked at 60 fields. I collected leaves from commercial farms in South Carolina. And there also the main result was that gummy stem blight was the predominant disease in every season. Gummy stem blight reduces watermelon yields by about 15% is what I found in my research plots here at the Coastal Research and Education Center. That translates to about a $6 million loss of the value of the watermelon crop in South Carolina. Currently I have two main projects. Uh, one project this field is involved in, it's about the ascospores, which are airborne spores of the fungus that causes gummy stem blight. We want to find out how far those spores can travel in the wind and cause disease on plants away from that field, from that spore source. And also we want to determine for how long those spores can be released from uh, colonized watermelon debris. When I did my studies with the debris, I assumed that the fungus was dormant or resting in the debris. Um, what my student Gabriel has found is that the, the fungus is not dormant, it is still actively producing and releasing spores. We collect debris of the watermelon vines and we place those, uh, after hydrating those pieces, on the lids of auger plates to monitor the spore release. And if their spores are still viable and, and are still released, uh, they, will, they will grow into a culture. And last year, uh, ask spores were released until 10 months after the field was inoculated. Growers asked me, how far do spores of the gummy stem lice fungus spread? And I really didn't have a good answer for that question. So Gabriel and I talked about this as a potential part of his PhD dissertation, but he didn't immediately start up this project. So I was actually the, the one to put out the first set of plants. We got infection on both watermelon and cantaloupe seedlings up to 400 feet away from the field. I was almost surprised how well it worked the first time we tried it. And when I showed him the data, then he said, okay, I'll take it over as part of my thesis. There's very little information about how far they can travel and cause disease. So another part of the study uh, is that we, we, we place trap plants at various distances from this field. We have eight different distance points that we measured out. After that, we incubate those plants to see if any symptoms of gummy stem blight develop. The farthest distance so far that we found that spores can travel is 1,200 feet. In a large watermelon field, say 50 acres, you may still be in the same field within 1,200 feet of an infected plant. Another part of the study is that we sample the air uh, at two different points. The idea is to quantify the, the number of spores to get an idea on the which uh, environmental conditions that uh, how many spores are in the air and use that data to, to give growers a better handle on, on, on how the disease is spread. Clearly, this is a second way for the fungus to spread, not just from plant to plant or leaf to leaf by rain splash, but also by wind.